Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools how-to video series, MIDI 1. This video is on loop recording MIDI. In this video, we're going to be going over the two ways you can loop record MIDI in Pro Tools and the matching alternates list and matching criteria. I will have the modifiers and shortcuts being used shown at the bottom of the screen. If you need a conversion to PC, you can find one at the end of this video. Some helpful shortcuts. Loop play on and off command shift L and loop record on and off option L. So here we are back in this session. Let's give a listen to what we had at the end of the last video. The first loop recording MIDI technique that we're going to look at is loop play MIDI merge. So with this technique, we're going to have loop playback on and MIDI merge turned on, but loop record is not going to be on. And this technique will work with a MIDI track or an instrument track. I'm just going to use an instrument track because we haven't used that setup yet. So we're going to create a new stereo instrument track. And then we'll click on create when we've got that. And there we go. I'm going to move it down to the bottom. And then we'll rename it. Use little v, little i, expand one. Just It's the first expand I'm using. And then in the comment section, I'm going to put the plugin I'm using, which is again expand. And then I will put the preset I'm loading. So that is in bank 27 perk and O2 electric perk or electric percussion is what I'm going to load. So I already kind of know what I'm going to load in there. So I type that in. Now that we've added an instrument track to our session, we can see that uh, we actually have something displayed in the instrument column. So we'll go uh, add the plugin on. So we'll go multi-channel instrument and choose expand to. And then we'll go up to the preset and we will click and go to the folder 27 percussion and down to O2 electronic percussion and choose that. And that loads up that percussion into the expand. And one of the nice things about instrument tracks is that when you load up a virtual instrument, the MIDI out portion automatically is assigned to that virtual instrument plugin. Okay, so I'll put this in record. The first one we're going to talk about is loop playback MIDI merge. So what happens with this technique is we're going to select a time range which is going to loop uh, because we're in loop play. We're going to hit record and uh, we're going to be recording. So it's going to play through and it'll all record the first pass and then it's going to go back to the beginning and loop back to the beginning and it'll go and it'll keep recording. And with each pass, I'm able to add or merge the new MIDI data with the previous MIDI data. So I can play a kick drum in and then it loops back around. I can then play the snare part in and then it loops back around. I can play a hi-hat, for example. So we're going to add some percussion. So I'm going to add one percussion part uh, and then it'll loop back around and I'll add a second one. So I'm going to select the time range that I want to record or loop, and I'm going to add this extra bar at the beginning, and that'll give me a little bit of reset time after I make a pass. I'll have a bar to kind of go, okay, what am I going to do next? And so my timing is right, rather than having to jump to the next thing I'm playing right away. So uh, rather than having to waste a whole pass through the loop, that bar will give me enough time to reset for what I want to record next. So I'm going to listen here and figure out what I'm going to play. So I'm going to audition a few sounds here, figure out a couple things real quick. Okay, I found a couple sounds I want to use. So I'm going to go into record. So I'm just going to hit record and away I'll go. I wasn't quite ready to start playing another sound, so I'm just going to let a loop go through, and then I'll play on the next one. So we're still recording, and I'll play on this pass. I 
Okay, on that second pass, I recorded this sound. And I'm going to take another pass. Let me find a few more sounds to use. I'm going to add a couple more. I'm going to put these two in. So still in loop play with MIDI merge. I'm going to go hit record. Two passes. One of the good things about stopping after you've put in a few things that you like is you create an undo point. So I didn't like what I just did, so I can hit undo, and the what I just did goes away, but the first few passes are still there. So I'm going to add in this and this. So let's try another one. All right, so hopefully you saw those MIDI notes appearing in that clip as I went through each pass. So that is loop play with MIDI merge. Each time you loop back around, you can add or merge the new MIDI data with existing MIDI data. Okay, let's look at the other technique that we can use, which is loop record. So we're gonna create a new stereo instrument track. Create, here we go, gonna name it little v, little i, vacuum, because that's the plugin I'm going to use. So down in here, I'm going to put vacuum as the plugin I'm using. And I'm going to put the preset that I'm going to load in, a thippy bass. Okay, so we go and go multi-channel, instrument, vacuum, vacuum, there it is. Click, there's vacuum. So I'm going to go to the preset, go to bass, and go to 30 thippy bass. So I already found the sound that I wanted to use, but if you hadn't, and here's what I did when I was looking for the sound, is right up here, once I was in the folder that I wanted bass, I can use these plus and minus buttons here and listen to some other presets. So I went through, listened to a few, and decided on thippy bass. So now we'll use the loop record version. So we're gonna turn off loop play, turn on loop record. So remember the shortcuts are option L to turn on and off loop record and command shift L to turn on and off loop play. So when I turned on loop record, automatically MIDI merge is grayed out. And the reason for that is what happens with each loop iteration is the existing data, if any, is replaced with the new incoming data. So this is a good thing to use if you wanted to play a solo. You don't want to add to the solo that was there before, you just want to play the solo again. And you're going to play it again and again and again until you get it right. So I've got my area selected and I'm again using this extra bar at the beginning so that after each pass I have a bar to kind of reset and get ready to start over. So here we go, I'm gonna lay down some bass lines. All right, so each time that looped around, you saw a new fresh clip appear, and then the new notes that I was playing appear in that clip. So I recorded several different versions. If we go and show the clip list, we can see all of those takes listed there. The last take, it started a new take, so it gave me a fresh clip, which I don't want. It doesn't have anything, I didn't play anything, so I'm gonna actually just delete that one. So I'm gonna select take six and clear it, because I it, didn't use it. So now I don't have hit remove. So now I don't have anything there. So let me drag out take one. 
So I can drag take one back out here. Again, being in grid mode is really helpful in this scenario when I made my selection and um, also dragging these back out. Go out of record and let's hear it. And we could go get take two, drag two out. And of course we could play and listen to these takes. Now this is kind of cumbersome. So there's a better way. And if we right click on the clip, we can go to matching alternates and see a list of MIDI clips. Now you get in a big session. I don't want to see every single clip in my session. I just want to see the ones I want right now. So if I go to matching criteria, it will open up this dialog box here. And if I select track name and clip start and end, it's gonna show me only those clips that have the same start and end point and have a matching track name. So now I right click, go to matching alternates and I only see the vacuum takes that I recorded. Okay, so now I can close my clip list and I can right click, choose the clip I want, play. Right click, choose another take, play. Right click, choose another take. So I could keep doing this and auditioning the takes until I find the one that's the best one, or I could be compiling them together into a best take based on several. But for the time being and for this demo, I will just pick one of them and move on. So we learned about loop playback MIDI merge, where when we are loop recording each pass, we get to add to the existing MIDI data. And we learned about loop recording, where each pass is a new take and allows us to have a completely new performance with each loop. So now we know those two ways that we can loop record MIDI. See you next time.